We'd like to warmly welcome everyone to this SharePoint Framework and JavaScript Special Interest Group biweekly sync. It just rolls off the tongue. Lots of great attendees and demos in store for you. My name is David Warner with Catapult Systems. I am a PNP team member. Today is September 23rd. Let's take a look at what's in store for us. We're going to have the latest updates on SharePoint Framework. We're going to see a whole host of PNP patterns and practices updates around PNP JS, CLI for Microsoft 365, our favorite reusable PNP SPFX controls, search web parts, new community samples, and of course, it looks like we got picture time back with together mode. That seems to be working. And then the highlight or the call are demos from our fantastic community presenters, Fabio, Siddharth, and Chandani on a variety of topics, custom themes via a web part, access Accessing personal files easily with the My OneDrive web part, and then surfacing user-specific calendar events with the My Outlook events web part built with React. Let's begin by taking a look at the opportunities to participate in patterns and practices. We have an SPFX demo opportunity. If you are uh, in the interesting mood to show off some of the amazing contributions you've made to the community, we would love to see them. Uh, if you would like to provide a PNP demo, we can uh, host that as well. You can contribute on GitHub if you've not been part of that yet. We have some sharing is caring opportunities to assist you with getting involved. And of course, we enjoy getting feedback from you. As Patrick always says, we request that you provide feedback in a positive and constructive way. We love positive feedback, but if there are things you would like to see improved, we would like to hear that too. Uh, we just want to make sure that it is constructive and positive. You can always request a demo demo uh, spot on one of these calls via the URL there below. We've also inserted it in the chat, um, and we will be able to provide you some feedback and get back to you and get that scheduled. Moving into our Pageo links, as Patrick calls it, a whole host of opportunities to get more involved here. We've got two developer and community video opportunities, as you can see there, aka.ms m365 dev YouTube and aka.ms forward slash m365 PNP forward slash videos. Those are going to take you to the videos that are created by you here in the community, as well as those in Microsoft providing information around the latest initiatives and platforms. We are an open source community, and so we invite you to provide that feedback as mentioned. You can do that through a variety of those URLs there, github.com forward slash SharePoint, forward slash PNP, forward slash Office Dev, and forward slash Microsoft Graph. Uh, you can get involved in discussions and provide feedback on issues. And because we are an open source community that includes all of the samples that are available to you, uh, you can get to those via the sample galleries. There is a huge list there that you can take advantage of. We won't call each of them out. Just know that you can get to all of them by going to the all up one stop shop URL of aka.ms forward slash m365 PNP. All of those teams, SPFX, Power Platforms, and list formatting samples are available for you to contribute back to. So we invite you to submit and provide your uh, contributions. The Microsoft 365 platform call has begun. Uh, this is a weekly call occurring on every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, the next call on the 28th of September. This is a recurring call with Microsoft presenters around the latest in the Microsoft 365 platform. So next week, we look to see a topic of building custom search layout experiences in SharePoint with Microsoft Search and an introduction to Microsoft Viva Connections extensibility. You can get the recurrent invite from aka.ms forward slash m365 dash dev dash call. Now, if you are overwhelmed or perhaps want to get more involved with everything in the community, whether it's utilizing the resources that are available to you or contributing back to those resources, Sharing is Caring is an initiative that we provide that provides hands-on guidance on how to get involved. These are safe space opportunities. These are sessions that are scheduled throughout the month. They are going to walk you through providing your first contribution to GitHub. If you've never done that, terms like pull request and fork might be a little intimidating, but just know that you are empowered and able to provide uh, contributions to the community and we welcome them all. These sessions will walk you through in a live hands-on session, safe space, not recorded, uh, and it's a great opportunity to collaborate with others in the community and ask questions without the fear of it being recorded. We have a number of Ask Me Anything sessions coming up, Power Platform next week. Be sure to sign up for that list formatting in October, and then we're going to bring back PNPJS uh, sometime in October as well, and the starter kit. 
You might notice the bolded new upcoming session, Power Platform Samples, first time contributor, that has been done and scheduled. So we invite you if you would like to start submitting some of your Power Platform contributions, but wanna see how to do that within GitHub, go sign up. It's gonna be an awesome session and it will be on repetition as well. Now, once you have contributed, we absolutely want to celebrate you. The PNP recognition program is going to provide that. We have partnered with Credly. Uh, it is a badging unique program that is the same badging mechanism that is used by Microsoft certification uh, badges. So they will sit right alongside your profile. We've got a number that we're working on with uh, uh, Louisa Fries on bloggers, on the independent publishing connectors, all kinds of opportunities that are coming up. We're gonna have some fun ones as we head into the winter time. So we ask you to please opt in aka.ms forward slash M365 PNP dash recognition. Again, we would love to celebrate you. It's something that you can share through Twitter and LinkedIn and get more involved. And we're gonna have more campaigns coming soon. So definitely opt in. Now let's move on to the SharePoint framework, the latest from engineering and hand it over to Vesa. Thank you. Uh, I included the following slide because this was actually getting a lot of feedback, good feedback from the uh, last, uh, sorry, on Tuesday call, um, just to clarify where the SharePoint framework can be used. And, and basically, the SharePoint framework, um, there was a discussion even when we started this call, why is it called SharePoint framework anymore? Because you can use it in so many areas, but renaming things is not always necessarily the best thing to do. But SharePoint framework can be used to build um, applications uh, with all the hosting for Microsoft Teams, also for Microsoft Viva. Um, so the Viva connection extensibility is with SharePoint framework, and you can build cards with parts and extensions, which are targeted there. And then we have the SharePoint, of course, there as well. And right now we're kind of investing in all of these areas. So we're trying to make uh, the best possible developer experience for all of this, not forgetting the SharePoint online, not forgetting the classic scenarios where SharePoint uh, is, is super valuable as well. The next version of the SharePoint framework will be 1.13. We were planning to get it out actually in September. It's unfortunately a bit delayed uh, in early October because a really small server-side fix, but we need to get that server-side fix rolled out. So we can't actually get it out yet. There's a public version and beta already available, um, but as part of the 1.13, it's really targeted for creating that Microsoft Viva extensibility. So the mobile experiences uh, with ACES uh, for, with SharePoint Framework. Uh, we also in, in, uh, update the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK, there's image rendering APIs, which will optimize if you're using an image, it will automatically redirect the image uh, URLs to use the CDN if it's enabled. Um, there's update on the dependency versions. There's also a uh, drop of the local workbench. So that's something which is good to be aware of as well. Now, in general, in future for the following steps, uh, Viva is really the big, big focus area. Teams is a big focus area, not again forgetting about SharePoint and fixing any known issues what we're having. So we're really investing right now on going through the issue list, cleaning up the backlog, making sure that everybody is, is in quotes happy um, on, on the situation and then improving where needed um, the capabilities which are available. But that's a quick recap on, on where we are and what are we doing and throwing it back to you, David. Awesome, thank you, Vesa. Let's move on to PNP JS client-side libraries and we'll hand it over to Julie. Thank you, I appreciate it, David. I don't have a ton today. We did, I did finally get around on September 20th to doing the 2.9 release. There is one new graph feature for advanced query, um, but otherwise I've been spending all my time. I'm working on uh, getting the testing framework up to date for the new v3 version so and doing some uh, uh, reworking some of the tests so that they work with the new model so i've just been hard at work at v3 and as we said earlier patrick's out on vacation for a couple weeks he should be back next week so we can uh, we can start integrating our work together uh if you are interested in v3 there is a v3 branch uh it is getting pretty close it, there a lot of the uh the code there is working and so you can go check that out if you're interested and and see what we're up to. Uh, also, our full list of plans is pinned on issue 1636. So if you go to that issue, you can see all our V3 plans, and then there's links out to discussions for each of the subsections in that uh, listed in that plan. So please go ahead and check out our V3 branch to see what we're up to. And if you would follow us on M365 PMPJS on Twitter to keep up with everything we're up to. Thank you, back to you, David. Awesome, thank you, Julie. Uh, we see all those rabbits are assembling for battle. 
All right, moving into the CLI for Microsoft 365. Uh, there is a new preview version four with some breaking changes. So we want to be aware of that. Retrieving SharePoint group members, change default output to JSON, removed value wrapper and output in some commands, removed duplicate IDs in SPO, list item commands, removed obsolete file path options, and many commands have been upgraded to use Microsoft Graph 1.0. You can always get the latest beta by using the NPM install at next. And then of course you can utilize it with Docker. Uh, V4 with breaking changes ships at the end of September. So be on the lookout for that, CLI is a fantastic tool for utilizing within your Microsoft 365 tendency. Moving into the SPFX reusable controls. These are controls that allow you to not have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, React controls can be used within your web parts and extensions uh, to provide a common look and feel amongst the SharePoint interface so that you are not having to try to recreate that on your own. The React property controls are available so that in that property pane of the web part, you are able to utilize some rich interactive features, again, without having to recreate it from scratch, use what the community has built, take advantage of all these tools. They are amazing. They will save you time and allow you to focus on the fun stuff stuff that you would like to integrate into your solutions. These are the last major changes of V2, so you want to update your solutions to SPFX 1.12.1 and V3 of the controls. A number of contributors have uh, added into these, so we want to thank them all, and you can get more at the URLs on the screen. Moving into PNP Modern Search, you can utilize the Modern Search experiences with powerful and flexible web parts. Uh, the September release is just a little bit behind, but they're still working on it. Uh, you can access, though, the July release, which includes a number of features, as you can see, Dutch translation, uh, persona card fix, and proper fix for custom helpers and web components across web parts, aka.ms forward slash PNP search. Now let's move into SPFX samples, and we'll hand it over to Hugo. Thank you, David. In a world where SPFX constantly evolves comes a set of repositories where you can find sample extensions, web parts, and adaptive card extensions. These are the updates since the last two weeks. Uh, on the SPFX extension sites, we have a new extension called Copy Move Items Within List by Sudarsan. Uh, and allows you to actually move stuff, uh, obviously, as the title says, within, within custom lists. Uh, it's a really cool feature. On the web part side, we have a new web part by Amory, uh, which is the application secrets exploration. If you have a lot of Azure AD applications with secrets, you should be using certificates. But let's say you have uh, secrets and they're, you want to keep track of whether they're expiring or not. This is a great way to actually get a list of all your secrets, not the actual secrets, but the expiry dates of them. Uh, Nick Brown has updated his team's membership updater for uh, the slash members in the private channels URL. And then on the advanced uh, page properties by Derman Mujahid, we have an update where he's added the support for web parts on sites that are running on a different language. And we have a new web part by our favorite uh, React intern, Allison Collins. Uh, it's a new web part that actually extends the, the SharePoint news web part by adding things like pagination, multi selecting stuff from multiple sites, different stylings, different, uh, all sorts of different options. Uh, it's, it's a really great example of how you can take an out of the box web part and actually make it, uh, you know, make your own version. And uh, she's done a great job with that. And we have a new repository uh, that uh, is called the Adaptive Card Extension Repository. We have already some pull requests for some samples, so we're going to be accepting these pull requests very shortly, and we're going to be presenting them on upcoming call calls. But if you do have some awesome Adaptive Card Extension samples that you'd like to contribute, please go to aka.ms slash SPFX dash ACES. That's it for me. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Hugo. And well done, community. Love to see all these samples. Well, it is now time for the optional picture time. So give me one second. I will just move in again, everybody in here. It seems to be working. Yes, they fixed it finally. So we can finally do this. I'm already recording. Let's wait until we hit the 50. I'm not going to enable my video because. Good, good, good. So we're not feeling. Is that the limit over there? Still, uh, still growing. Seats. A couple more seats. Whole house, almost. <laughs> I think that's it. Let's do some hand waving, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, thank you. 
Hopefully we'll see you in the Düsseldorf or in Las Vegas later this year if you get to travel. So we'll see who's going to be where. But thank you, everybody. Awesome to see all of the people. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get back on the demos. All right. All right. Well, first up on our demo is Fabio on the topic, apply a custom theme or a variation of the current SharePoint theme directly to the web part. Fabio, feel free to take over. Yes. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Uh, so welcome uh, to this uh, demo about uh, on a web part that I implemented to uh, show you how to use the uh, Front UI team variant uh, inside the web part. So let me share some information about me. I'm Max of MVP in Office Development and Business Application. And uh, I work uh, as senior consultant on Microsoft 365 and Power Platform uh, technologies. So you can find here some information if you want to contact me by email or Twitter, LinkedIn. OK, so let's start. So in this slide, you can see uh, two, in, two screenshots that come from the SharePoint lookbook. And uh, I marked uh, two web part because uh, when I uh, take a look at the lookbook, I'm really impressed, impressed on the possibility to highlight some uh, content inside the web part. So for me, it's very important when I build uh, some uh, internet for my clients to highlight uh, the content of the web parts because uh, some clients want to make uh, more focus uh, in uh, some web part and less focus to another web part. And uh, of course, there are many ways uh, you can use uh, by, uh, by write your code on a background image, for example, or you can use the section background to change the background and then the web part inside this section uh, have on a different, for example, uh, background. My web part, my demo, it's uh, an, uh, an exercise to how to use the Fluent UI variation not only inside the uh, section uh, page, but inside the web part. And this implementation, it's uh, implemented in uh, three different ways. So in all uh, these cases, this example works uh, very well uh, with uh, the, the Fluent UI React control, of course. If you don't use the Fluent UI uh, React controls, uh, of course, the variation uh, it's applied on the background and some HTML element uh, like text or something like that. And of course, you can use the uh, team object to take all the property that the, the team have to take the background color, the accent color, the text color, or something like that. So the first way, it's uh, uh, the simple way. Take the current uh, section variation color. Uh, if I select inside this web part, uh, these settings inside the uh, property pane, uh, nothing appears. So the background and the color come from the section, uh, the section variation. But there are a second way, and then you can select the current SharePoint theme. If you select this uh, value, you have another option. And now you are able to select the variation of the current SharePoint team. For example, known or neutral or soft or strong. It's the same variation that you, you have for the section variation. But at this time, the uh, variation is applied inside, uh, inside the web part. And you can see uh, if I select the strong, uh, you see that background it's, uh, it's green. It's the same accent color I have inside the, the team applied to this side. The third way, it's uh, the possibility to use uh, an, a custom palette that comes from the uh, Fluent UI team designer. Later, I show you this tool, but uh, basically, you are able to uh, define some colors and then generate an JSON that contains the palette color for uh, an, a Fluent UI theme. So by select custom and then use uh, this Fluent UI uh, custom palette uh, property, you are able to set the custom palette. And then again, you are able to change from uh, known, neutral, soft, and strong uh, variation. Of course, uh, don't worry about the, the content of this web part because it's just some Fluent UI components just to, to, to test uh, this, uh, this behavior. So if you don't know the Fluent UI team designer, uh, it's uh, on a free tool uh, that you are able to use at the browser. 
uh, you are able to uh, select the primary color, the text color, the text color, and the background color, and then automatically this tool generate the uh, the theme that you can uh, export as a JSON or code or PowerShell. In this case, uh, we need the, just the JSON file, uh, so the JSON text, and then copy and paste inside the property of uh, of the web part. So just a simple a simple demo. This is a, a, a simple page that contains uh, a section with two columns. Of course, if uh, I change the section background, you're able to see that the, the web part, so this is a, a simple text web part, and this is my, my web part. This web part uh, takes the color of the, of, the, uh, of the section. But if you select the web part, you are able to change to the current SharePoint team. And then again, we are able to change the uh, variation just for this web part. And the last way, the third way, it's uh, the custom. You are able to copy and paste uh, on a custom uh, theme and then change the variation just so the variation that come from this uh, custom uh, custom theme. Now the implementation. The implementation uh, starts uh, with uh, the enable support for the team variants inside the web part manifest. You know that you have to put these uh, supports team variants uh, true inside the manifest to enable your web part to support the team variants. The next thing is you need to manage the team variant inside your web part. There are some code that you have to, to, to implement. Basically, you need to uh, take the team service and the team provider. The third variable is the, the team variant, the variation, the current variation for the web part. And then a good uh, thing to do is to manage the uh, theme changed event, because uh, uh, later I show you that uh, we need to re-render the web part, because in the render method, we calculate uh, the, the variation for the theme inside, uh, uh, inside this web part. The core of this uh, example is the team service.ts. It's uh, an, uh, a class, a TypeScript class that contain all the code that we need to generate the team with all the property that this web part has. For example, uh, the, the, the type of the variation, known, neutral, soft, or strong, and of course, the type of team that we want to, to use, the current team, the variation that comes from the section or the generate theme from the palette, the JSON file. Then in the render method, we need to uh, generate by using this uh, generate theme method of the theme service class, we need to generate the current theme. And then when we have this object, we pass this theme, it's a, a theme variant, to the React control or the component that you want to. to to use to render your web part, of course. Some uh, information regarding the uh, property pane. So I used some PMP property control, like the property field code editor to manage the, uh, the JSON part of uh, the team uh, in, if you select the, the team type custom. And for the selection of the background uh, shading, I used the property pane choice group. Uh, with uh, a way to generate dynamically an SV SVG image as a background to highlight the different background for each variation. And then I use, uh, again, another console from the PMP property control. It's the property pane field message to show an, uh, just an info to the user to remember if select the custom team type to use the team designer to generate uh, the team. So, just uh, on a simple example of the code for manage the, the property pane in a background uh, shading. The first part, it's a uh, meter that we have inside the, the, the class of uh, the web part, the generating line SVG for background shading type that uh, have uh, an, a type uh, as a parameter. And basically we calculate, based on the type, we calculate the current theme and then generate an SVG inline image. And this basically, it's uh, uh, the image that you can see inside this slide, the, uh, the text AA and the background uh, on, and the foreground with different colors. And then 
In the property pane configuration, I generate the inline SVG for known, neutral, soft, and strong variation, and then use this uh, text for the image source for each uh, options in the property pane choice group. The last thing is you need to remember to use the team provider control to automatically apply the team to all the control that you use. So there is nested on the team provider inside your React control. It's very important because in this way, by passing the, our uh, team variant property to the team parameter of the uh, team provider, uh, the team provider automatically apply the team, the current team, uh, to all to all Fluent UI component that you have inside your uh, main controller when you use this uh, uh, team provider. Okay, so uh, some were, some references. Uh, the first of the first one is the the web part the URL. So it's the the URL of the repo when you are able to find this uh, this web part source code. The references to the PMP properties controls, and the reference to the Fluent UI scheme utilities. It's an npm package that you can add to your code to your project. And uh, this package contain all the utility to generate the different variation from a uh, specific uh, Fluent UI theme. So thank you and back to David. Awesome, thank you Fabio, very, very cool stuff. Appreciate you sharing that thank with you. us in the community. All right, well, let's move on to Siddharth. Accessing personal files easily with my OneDrive web part. Siddharth, if you would like to take over the screen share. Thanks David. Let me share my screen. Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to this demo today. I would be presenting an SPFX web part sample to display current users OneDrive files. A little bit about myself. I'm Siddharth Vagasia and I'm an independent consultant. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP and a proud M365 community contributor. These are some of the social handles through which you can connect with me. So you can find the link to this web part at this particular link. First, let's see the driving factor. Okay, uh, so the driving factor was obviously this was for one of the customer who wanted an web part to display files as a part of their internet landing page for the current logged in user, but they were supposed to display OneDrive files. Okay, so probably when it was developed, it was part of you know internet landing page, but I probably think this can also be used as a Viva connection web part. Uh, this is a way to show personalized content for the current logged in user and to explore OneDrive Graph API and its usage within this. So we are using OneDrive Graph API to get the current logged in user files and everything and then display it. Uh, moving ahead, summaries are some of the features of the web part. Uh, as I said, it displays current logged in users OneDrive file. The folders and files are browsable. It means we would be able to drill down to the folders. And if it is a file, it takes us directly to the particular file by using the uh, URL. Then it also supports display most of the known file types. Uh, I tried to add as many known extensions files to display the icons, uh, but if it they have some icons are missing, it can be easily extended. Uh, then there is a breadcrumb which will allow us to basically navigate between the folders the way we have this functionality in our OneDrive application. Then we have facility to sort the files based on name and modified date column, which is important. And uh, there is a way to configure this web part by which we can choose the field which we wanted to display on the web part, like name, modified, modified date, uh, modified by, file size, and sharing. And also there is an option to make the web part link clickable to send the end user to actual OneDrive URL. So this was the, uh, these are the main of the features which you will see in the demo. So I will just go to demo. I'll refresh the page. So this is the web part which we are seeing. And if you see, this is, these are the, my OneDrive files which is there. Uh, to confirm that these are OneDrive files, I'll go to my OneDrive URL where you can see the similar list of files and most probably uh, I have tried to replicate the same look and feel. And uh, you can drill down to the folders, within folders. If it is a file, you click on it, it will take you to that particular file. You can use the breadcrumb to navigate to different folders and the root files. Then you can sort by name and uh, modified 
also you can see that there are different types of icons which are being um, supported different types of files okay coming to the configuration if we go to the configuration the web part title is configurable so you can configure this and i am using pnp uh, pnp reusable control to uh, use this web part title and there you can choose the fields which you wanted to display onto the web part okay the reason behind giving this as a configurable would be probably we might need this web part on an internet landing page we just wanted to display a single column uh, this would be an example of that like if you see the same web part is being added to a landing page where it just display one column and nothing else so it would be easy to configure this and uh, this option is basically to whether you wanted to make this uh, link uh, hyperlink or not if if it is on it will take the user to uh, one drive of the particular user so yeah a simple web part but probably quite useful uh, when we wanted to use this kind of web parts to give a personalized feel to the end user on our internet landing page or probably viewer connection going to the code uh, this is an spfx code structure which is a typical code structure which we have in our onedrive web part.ts file we have all the configurable properties which i have mentioned i'm using graph client uh, factory to basically initialize the uh, to get data from the graph uh, so to avoid the authentication and everything because it is out of the box supported within our shared point framework then once we go to the main web part uh, when when uh, component file where in the render method uh, we have a link control which will basically display the web part title based on the configuration either either it would be a link or it would be just a title and then a spinner to just uh, display loading messages when we are navigating through folders and getting data and then there is uh, a custom component called onedrive table uh, which i have which i have created uh, which would be having the actual logic to display all the files within that and it also has an error message for example particularly if there is an error while getting data from the graph api or anything it will basically display error there okay so coming to the onedrive uh, table onedrive table is a component wherein we are passing the data and everything to the component based on the current folders and everything then if you see uh, these are the typical methods to sort data depending on what the current sorting parameter is and uh, this is the table cell click, uh, click event handler a callback method to get the new files as soon as a folder is been created within that particular file right and same goes for the breadcrumb so as soon as the breadcrumb is clicked uh, it basically gets the current folder hierarchy and makes a drive api call uh, before going to the uh, table container and everything i just wanted to walk you through methods wherein we are uh, getting the data so it would be in the main component file so in the component it mount this particular method is to get the url of the current users one drive and then it would be used to add it to the web part title and this method is basically to actually call the graph api the endpoint would be something slash me slash drive root and the folder path would be a dynamic folder path depending on the user selection and by default if it is empty it is going to go and get all the files at the root and uh, if it, the particular folder is selected it will go and get files from the children so this would be a, a typical path of an, any folder if you wanted to get data and uh, if it is a subfolder it would be something like this the way uh, the data would be get so basically what we have to maintain as a part of our state is the current selected folder path and uh, this method takes up from dynamically getting data within that particular folder coming back to the component uh, i have two component one is the header component which takes care of displaying the header within the table and uh, the body component which takes care of rendering the table body and the table row and this is a typical list view which we would use okay uh, but to explore material ui within this i am using material ui component to see that you know how things would look like and just to explore uh, material ui within our spfx web part definitely we could use office ui fabric wherein we have uh, similar list view controls and everything right other than that 
Just one thing which I would like to highlight is as we are using Graph API, this web part would require two permissions, which would be file read and file dot read all, which would be a delegated permission as we are getting the files from the current logged in user. And uh, the icons, uh, icons are being, we are, I'm using SVGs. So all the supported icons are being stored as a part of the web part and then is been referred into the CSS files, okay? So yeah, a simple uh, SPFX web part, which will you know explore the usage of OneDrive Graph API and um, can be used it as landing page and Viva connection. Um, that's it from my side. Thanks, David, over to you. Thanks, Siddharth. Really good job. You said a couple times it's simple, but sometimes simple is uh, powerful. And that's what you've done here. Really appreciate the effort in making it feel out of the box, but also dynamic where you could use it in that full width section uh, single column section or the sidebar, uh, making it very dynamic and utilitarian. So excellent job. All right, Thanks, well, let's baby. move. You're welcome. Let's move into our last demo. Chandani, Prajapati, Surface user specific calendar events with my Outlook events web part built with React. Chandani, feel free to take over. Yeah. Hi, David. Thank you. Let me share my screen. So, yeah. Thanks everyone. Today we will see how my Outlook events web part uh, they, uh, will work. So uh, first of all, I am Channi Prajapati. Currently I'm working as a SharePoint consultant. Apart from this, I am a blogger, open source contributor and maintainer of the PNP SPFX human generator. And here uh, is my Twitter handle. If uh, there is any query, then you can reach out to me. So uh, about this sample, so this uh, uh, in this sample uh, uh, it display current logged in users outlook events and yes uh, there are some uh, uh, important features like it will render events in uh, two layout one is a compact and another one is a film strip and it uh, provides the date range selection to the user like uh, if uh, it want to show like current week event or next two week event or a current month event and so on and it will be it will directly navigate to teams if there is a teams meeting and it will also so so is the single as well as multiple days event and these all features are configurable and in this web part uh, look and feel is same as the out of the box events web part so let's see the demo so i already added this web part in one page so first of all let me edit so here for one is first of all this is a web part title then there is a date range selection so like if uh, i will select the all upcoming events then it will show the current year events then if i will select the uh, this week then it will shows me a current week event then if there is a next two week then it will shows the two weeks events same for the current month and same for the quarter then there is a two layout one is like compact and another one is a film strip so in compact, we are asking to user how many number of events do you want to show? For example, if I will enter two, then it will shows me two events. If I will enter five, then it will shows me five events, but currently there is a three events only. So if I will select the current year, then it will shows the five events. So this is all about the demo. So now move to the code. First of all, folder structure. So uh, main file is react my event web part dot ts. So in this file we will configure all the property pen configuration and we will pass the properties to the main component. Then there is uh, then there is a component folder because it is a react based web part. So first file is uh, for the properties. Second one is for the state and th third one is for the styling and uh, fourth one is the react my event dot tsx. So in this uh, file, our main component will be rendered. Then uh, there is a service uh, folder and in service folder, there is a calendar service dot ts file. So in this file, we will create our service. Then there is a uh, compass, uh, there is a share folder and inside this folder, there is a component folder and in the, uh, this folder, there are some common components and these all components are uh, uh, coming from out of the box event web parts. Then yeah, main file is package uh, solution.json. So first of all, we are using graph API. So we have to add calendar do, calendars dot read uh, scope in web API permission request. Then yeah, 
calendar service dot ts file. So in this file, we are ca calling graph API to get the ma outlook events. So for that, I am calling the calendar view endpoint, and this endpoint we uh, we need a two uh, two parameter start date and end date because we are using uh, date range. So we we need a start date and end date as a parameter. And then uh, react my event webpart dot ts. So in this file, first of all, property and configuration. So first one is maximum events for uh, for compact. So as we have seen, uh, we are asking to user how many number of event do you want to so in a compact layout only. So this is a condition based. If there is a compact layout, then uh, we will ask to user to get number of user uh, number of event want to show. Then. Uh, another properties are like first one is web part title, then second one is date range. So in this we are using property pen drop down, then uh, third one is a layout. So here we are uh, I am using property pen choice group. Then render method in same file react my event web part dot ts. So here we, uh, we are passing all the properties to the our component. Then moving to the component react my event dot tsx. So uh, first method is component did mount. So in this method, first of all, we are calling get events method. So in uh, get events method, another function is get start and end date function. So in get start and end date function, we are finding end date because uh, end date will be based on date date range and current date will uh, current date will be two days date. So for example, uh, date range dot all cup upcoming. So in this we need a current year date. So in end date we are uh, using women's days and here uh, last we, uh, last day uh, uh, is a Friday of the current week and here we are using uh, one year and it formatting it to y y y y m m d d. Then for example, there is a uh, current week. Then here we are using women's days and end of the week. And here we are not adding anything for but if there isn't suppose next two weeks, then we are adding two weeks to the date. So and so on for the like month and quarter. Then yeah, uh, get events method. So in this method we are calling uh, our service which we are already created in calendar service dot ts file. So here we are passing uh, current date and end date and uh, in response if uh, there is a data then we will store data in an event state. If uh, there is a no data, then we uh, will set a no events found message state. And if there is an error, then we will set state error message. Then main part is render the com content. So here, first of all, uh, we will check if there is an event or event length. If event length will be found, then first we will check the layout. If it will be a compact layout, then we will uh, call the method render compact list. Otherwise, we will render the film strip list. And if there is a suppose error message, then we will print the error message in message bar. And if, for example, uh, and if there is a no event found, then we will print the no event found message state in the message bar. Now let's see these two methods film strip and compact list. So first one is film strip list. So here. I am using film strip layout. So this is a uh, component which already created and here we are mapping the event and we will render each event in event event card. So this is also component and here are some properties we have to pass like event then uh, is compact then is edit mode and so on. Then another one method is render compact list. So here we are uh, using pagination because uh, whenever a uh, user will uh, select the compact then uh, we are asking to user how many number of events do you want to show. So here uh, pagination component will be used. Then uh, there is a compact layout uh, component and here. Another method is render compact list item. So in this method I am using event card to render the each event. So uh, this this is all about the code. And here uh, there are some reference and uh, here link for the event web part. So thanks. Uh, thank you. I hope it will help you. Back to you, David. Awesome, Johnny. Thank you so much. Uh, calendars are always popular, but always a little challenging. So really appreciate your efforts and 
definitely you thoroughly thought this through a lot of information uh hugo bernier would be smiling on how you shared the code <laughs> through your slides excellent job thank you so so much Thanks. we uh thank you we wrapped up our demos a little early but that means that we have some q a opportunity so we will unmute uh, and you could raise your hand, or uh, I think we could also put the questions in the chat if you'd like. And we will do our best to answer any questions. Vesa, is that the ready? I'm, I'm always the target, so it's all good. So Everyone's, everyone's <laughs> caught off guard with Q&A. We we're so efficient today on the timing. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, thank you for the for the presenters today. Really, really cool stuff, and and it's it's awesome to see so cool looking web parts uh, and the the property banes and everything else that they really look like the out of the box ones. So it's it's really really cool stuff. So. A question in the chat: Is there a target date for next PNP Modern Search release? I know they are working on that now. Uh, the slide said that they're slipping a little behind on the uh, the September release, but I think that is still a goal to have that out sometime in this month. Now, as it's community-driven project, there might be small delays on that, but um, but hey, it, it should be out this month. Uh, if is isn't, then early next month. Any date on the customized profile card, the GA for the customized profile card and a craft APIs, I would not be able to unfortunately answer that on any date as such also because I'm not from craft side, but but uh, I, 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 I don't know. So hopefully pretty soon. After today. It will be after. Yes, <laughs> it will be a Tuesday, not necessarily <laughs> the next Tuesday or yeah, a Tuesday. Any update on admin functionality? Okay, so let me double check what Stefan is actually adding here. Uh, just open up the random link in a chat. That's always safe. Hopefully, this is uh, something which we can actually have a look now. Just kidding. Um, the template uh, functionality is evolving a lot, uh, so there will be certainly admin operations in here uh, exact timelines and all of that uh, i can share but there's a lot of lot of efforts internally being actually currently done for the templates and trying to figure out how to have a native out of the box way of doing also modern pages and configurations from here and then having options for third party templates something what we're also speculating again completely speculating not for no promises no promises but if somebody would be interested in building templates in store so that what if you would be a partner who's submitting templates in the in the app source and then then end users can acquire them and those would be a templates which are available in SharePoint and and potentially in Microsoft Teams all of those scenarios have been kind of a planned but no exact timelines um, and if those feel interesting feel uh, please remember to provide us feedback and keep on asking updates on those VS Code extension that highlights when you do something like this equals that instead of, uh, is there a VS Code extension? I don't know. If somebody knows, then let Mike know. May have been already asked. Any update on the next SP on-prem subscription-based SPFX version? Yeah, so um, unknown person is a great title and a name. So the on-premises, uh, unfortunately, it seems that the on-premises version will stick within the 1.4.1 version. So there will not be apparently an update on the SPFX uh, version, which will be in the SharePoint subscription edition. And I do understand that that's not necessarily a super optimal situation, uh, but it really comes down on, on SharePoint framework has to follow up on the UX uh, version and UX experiences with the particular on-premises version is using. So we cannot use a newer version of SharePoint Framework in on-prem than what the out-of-the-box web parts are using. And that's really the, the limiting factor for us in, in also in a platform site to provide a newer version there. And it seems to be now, I, and again, I cannot, uh, let's say, yet say this for 100% certainty, but it seems to be that unfortunately as the SharePoint Server Subscription Edition will be using the same version uh, of uh, UX components as SharePoint Framework 2019, we cannot upgrade the SharePoint Framework version which is being used in on-prem, which is unfortunate, but I, I guess it's better to know um, the reasons and, and the background information than speculating. So. 
Well, Microsoft provides some uh, some of this cool SPF web parts presented over time in the out of the box web parts in future. Um, good question from uh, Avinash. So, so a lot of the the sample web parts and ideas what we're being presented in this course. Of course, there are there are other people in the Microsoft who's following up on their calls and demos. And we are collecting ideas of, uh, from this from here as well. So some of these might end up in an out of the box web part. Uh, some of these might end up uh, integrated on existing web parts. Um, and but of course you can also download the sample. But I do understand that then there's the potential supportability challenges on that. So um, all of this stuff, what we do together with community, is being used, of course, internally also for innovation and, and ideas. So. Potentially, yes. Does Power BI have community calls like it? Um, I'm not sure, actually. I should probably, we should check from Heather Newman uh, if somebody knows. Uh, there are Power Apps community calls, but uh, the community calls, we, we kind of started them a while back, like six years ago already in our side, but then we've been seeing a uptake on them, but we haven't actually, not all BG and not all communities do that. I can reach out to Heather and check on that, Mark, but. Uh likely we might start seeing more of that in the platform call to VESA, right, maybe? Yep, yep, absolutely, absolutely. That would be, so our Tuesday call is basically intended to be anything in the Microsoft 365. Um, so it's not intended to be limited on Microsoft Teams, Craft, SharePoint, it's it's anything. And, and that really depends on getting those demo spots filled in. So, um, so most likely we'll see something there in the future. Is there, Jason has a good question. Is there an absolute end date for classic SharePoint online sites and functionality? So answer is no end date. Uh, so just to be super clear, any existing site can be transformed to be modern and any uh, uh, any classic functionality should have pretty much already at this point close and modern replacement. So it's not about recreating a site, it's just are you looking at the same site using a modern or a classic view? So it's, it's actually the view selection. Now, will we have an end date for the classic experiences in SharePoint Online? Yes, at some point. Uh, will it be within the following year? No. Uh, will it will we support uh, classic SharePoint within 20,055? Probably not. Uh, so at some point, sure, classic experiences is going to be replaced uh, in modern. And, and but our intention is really make the modern modern experiences so compelling that we can see from the statistics that everybody has moved to modern, and therefore we can shut down classic with a years of notice. So we're not going to do anything traumatic, which is like, hey, classic is now gone. No, 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 we're not going to harm you. That's not the intention. Um, all of the customers who are investing right now on the on the SharePoint online don't have to worry about the fact that uh, it's the classic and the modern when they're going to be supported uh, or that we would actually pull it in the moment of a notice. We would never do that. We will communicate. We will give you a heads up. We will communicate and communicate and announce uh, any deprecations early on as possible as possible. Good. Uh, the question, question now. Yeah, any work coming <laughs> in, this is a good one. Any work coming on the new version of the Internet Starter Kit? Is that still a thing? Absolutely. Uh, Bo Cameron and Eric Overfield are leading that initiative and they are actively working on that next version. Uh, so I think sometime in the next couple months, we will see a lot more activity on that. As well as mentioned for the Sharing is Caring AMAs, we will be having an AMA right around the release of that. So you can see where you can get more involved, where the changes have occurred. Great opportunity to collaborate and see where you could either contribute back to it or start utilizing it in a new and exciting way. Yep. And maybe a fi uh, almost a final one. Avinash is asking, is there a PowerShell script to make a SharePoint site both classic and modern? It's actually all about how do you access the site. So any existing site which is classic, you can click view the site in modern. And, and that's basically how you flip that. Now, the only difference is, are you using then classic pages or modern pages? And, and we do have modernization tooling, which will basically transform any a classic uh, SharePoint page to be a modern SharePoint page. And maybe actually that's a good feedback. Maybe we should do a recap of that modernization tooling and the latest on that in, in one of the community calls. So that, that's a really good input. So, because I think people need to get reminded on that option to be available. 
All right. Uh, well, I and, think we. And, oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, Sorry. And Stefan is asking, <laughs> uh, as we're modernizing, is it going to still flip the, the web template definitions? No, no, it's not. The underlying web template definition is it SDS hash zero or SDS hash three doesn't actually limit uh, the experience. Sorry, David. Oh, that's it. okay. Great <laughs> questions. Really great that we had that opportunity today. Uh, great collaborative opportunity. So thank you all for the questions. All right. Well, again, thank you to our amazing demo presenters, Fabio, Siddharth, and Chandani. Excellent job today. The recording for this will be available within 24 hours at the Microsoft 365 PNP YouTube channel, aka.ms forward slash M365 PNP slash videos. You can always follow on Twitter at Microsoft 365 Dev and at Microsoft 365 PNP. The next SPFX call will be two weeks from today, October 7th at 7 a.m. The next M365 general development call will be next week, September 30th at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Both calls are Pacific time. Always get the invites directly from aka.ms forward slash M365 PNP. All of the developer community calls can be accessed as well. Uh, you can access that platform call, which is growing in popularity, a fantastic call to get it directly from the mothership, all Microsoft presenters. So it's a fantastic initiative, uh, aka.ms forward slash M365 dash dev dash call, and then a host of other calls, adaptive cards, identity platform, add-ins, power apps, Microsoft 365 dev sig, and of course our SharePoint framework sig that you are on now. Download the invites, get them on your calendar. We'd love to continue seeing everyone at them. Again, thank you for the presenters, amazing job. And we hope everyone has a great rest of your week. Mm -hmm.